That's Professor Brian Cox, a former rock band keyboardist turned particle physicist who now explains the nature of time, space, and life itself to millions of people around the world. And that's just the beginning. He's been called the Carl Sagan of the UK, a pop science prophet, a rock star physicist. But the real story of Professor Brian Cox is far more improbable than that. This is not just the story of a physicist, it's the story of how an unlikely chain of events, music, failure, and timing created one of the most powerful science communicators of our time. From failing math in high school to building machines that recreate the Big Bang, this is the insane true story of Brian Cox. Brian Edward Cox was born on the 3rd of March, 1968, at the Royal Oldham Hospital, just outside Manchester. He grew up in the working-class suburb of Chatterton, where his parents both worked for the Yorkshire Bank. His childhood wasn't just books and schoolwork. It was a mix of gymnastics, dance lessons, bus spotting, and even plane spotting. But the turning point came when he was 12 years old. Like millions of others in that generation, he picked up a copy of Carl Sagan's Cosmos. That single book planted the idea that science could be more than facts. It could be a story about our place in the universe. And yet, science wasn't his strongest subject. In fact, he famously scraped a D in mathematics at a level. It nearly closed the door to a university education. Cox would have to retake the exam later just to qualify for higher study. But physics wasn't his only passion. In the late 1980s, Cox joined a local rock band. By the early 90s, he'd become the keyboardist for D-Ream, a Northern Irish synth pop group that would score a UK number one hit in 1994. The song became the soundtrack to a political movement. When Tony Blair's Labour Party swept to power in 1997, the song blared from campaign speakers across Britain. It became more than music. It became a message of hope. But for Cox, something was missing. Amid the tours, the fame, the crowds of over 70,000 fans, he still found himself reading physics textbooks between gigs. Beneath the bright lights of stardom, another voice was calling. He was torn between two lives, the instant gratification of a rock career and the slower, uncertain path of physics. Leaving D. Ream to finish his PhD would mean giving up a successful music career, a sacrifice he later described as one of the hardest decisions of his life. It was a choice between destiny and desire and Cox chose science. By 1990, Brian Cox had stepped away from the stage and enrolled at the University of Manchester. He earned a first-class BSc in physics in 1995, followed by a PhD in high-energy particle physics in 1998. His doctoral thesis focused on double diffraction processes at the HERA Collider in Germany. From there, his research took him across the world. He worked on the H1 experiment at DSI in Hamburg, the DO experiment at Fermilab in Chicago, and eventually joined Atlas at CERN's Large Hadron Collider. There, he played a key role in analyzing data from the collider's high-energy collisions, helping search for the most elusive particle in the standard model, the Higgs boson. So, what is the Higgs boson? To understand why the Higgs matters, imagine the universe as a giant invisible field, like cosmic molasses, particles moving through this field pick up mass, the same way a spoon collects honey as it stirs. Without the Higgs field, nothing in the universe would have weight. No stars, no planets, no us. And in July 2012, the Atlas and CMS experiments at CERN announced they had finally found the long-theorized particle, a discovery worth a Nobel Prize. For Brian Cox, it was vindication. The kid who scraped a D in math was now at the heart of one of science's greatest breakthroughs. After years of working behind the scenes at CERN, Brian Cox did something few scientists ever do. He stepped in front of the camera and made physics feel like poetry. It began almost by chance. In 2006, Cox appeared on the BBC science documentary series Horizon, just as a guest expert on particle physics. But something happened. Audiences didn't just understand what he said, they felt it. Soon. Cox wasn't just behind the scenes, he was hosting. Between 2005 and 2015, Cox became the BBC's go-to voice for science. He hosted award-winning series like Wonders of the Solar System, Wonders of the Universe, Forces of Nature. Each episode turned a scientific principle into a visual journey. Whether explaining entropy from a sand dune or gravity on a glacier, Cox didn't just present facts, he told stories. 
His signature was big landscapes, small questions, and giant answers. Cox would stand atop cliffs or beside waterfalls, describing the curvature of space-time like a line of poetry. He never shouted. He didn't dramatize. He made silence feel profound. These weren't niche science programs. They became global hits. Wonders of the Universe was broadcast in over 40 countries and watched by millions. In an age of declining attention spans, Brian Cox made complex science feel like bedtime stories for grown-ups. He wasn't just a TV host. On radio, he co-created The Infinite Monkey Cage with comedian Robin Ince, a comedy science panel show that became a cult hit. The result was something the press called the Brian Cox Effect. Between 2008 and 2012, UK physics degree applications rose by about 50%. He had made science aspirational, almost cool. Fans and critics alike began calling him the David Attenborough of physics. Brian Cox didn't just make people care about space. He made them feel like they belonged in it. By the 2020s, Brian Cox had become something almost unimaginable, a physicist who could sell out arenas. Between 2022 and 2025, his live show, Horizons, a 21st century space odyssey, toured the world. The production combined high-resolution planetary imagery, AI-driven visuals, and live orchestral performances, turning physics into a spectacle. The numbers were staggering. Horizons sold nearly 369,000 tickets, shattering the Guinness World Record for the most successful science tour in history. At a ceremony in May 2025, Cox was awarded the certificate on stage, most tickets ever sold for a science tour. In that moment, the symbolism was clear. Scientists were no longer confined to chalkboards and labs. Cox had become a figure who could command crowds normally reserved for rock stars and pop icons, proving that science could rival entertainment on the grandest scale. But Cox didn't stop with fame. He used his platform to fight pseudoscience, misinformation, and anti-scientific narratives, especially in climate denial and anti-vaccine rhetoric. He was outspoken, yet calm, firm, but never condescending. He also worked with educators and policymakers to improve science outreach in UK schools, advocating for engaging curricula and open access. And when missions to Mars gained momentum, he was often the one explaining to the public why it mattered. For all the admiration, Brian Cox has not been without his critics. Some physicists accuse him of dumbing down complex topics. Others say he romanticizes science too much that his analogies prioritize emotion over precision. Cox, however, never claimed to be a theorist trying to push the boundaries of physics. He claimed to be a bridge. If we don't make it beautiful, people stop listening. He chose storytelling over gatekeeping. And while Cox has made media appearances across nearly every platform, there are lines he refuses to cross. He's declined to debate flat earthers or astrologers on air, arguing that doing so lends fringe beliefs legitimacy. That stance drew backlash from skeptics and from conspiracy theorists, especially in 2008 when CERN's Large Hadron Collider was turned on. Internet forums panicked about a black hole destroying the Earth. Cox called it what it was, a misunderstanding weaponized by fear. He appeared in interviews, wrote op-eds, and defended science against sensationalism. But he didn't just defend physics from outside pressure. He took his advocacy into Parliament pushing for reforms in science funding, education, and climate policy. And then there were the public controversies. In 2016, during a live debate on Australian television, Cox confronted climate change denier Senator Malcolm Roberts by holding up a NASA graph of rising global temperatures. Roberts dismissed it as manipulated data, sparking one of the most viral moments of Cox's career. This is now a clear global problem. Um, the absolute, absolute consensus is that, that human action is leading to an increase in average temperatures. Absolute consensus. It, 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 I can't, I, I know you may try to argue with that, but you can't. No, I'm not my uh, mate, so, 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 um, so, but therefore, um, but the, the key point is, can we respond to it? Is it, do we have the political institution and the political will and the organization globally to respond to this challenge? And that worries me immensely. I don't think we do at the moment. And I'm absolutely stunned that someone who is inspired by Richard Feynman, a fantastic scientist who believes in empirical evidence, is quoting a consensus. The data has been corrupted, and we know that the 1930s what you mean were more like corrupted today. Yeah. Corrupted? What do you mean corrupted? Been manipulated and, by, and, uh, by NASA. 
Glad to see it, yes. He has also been outspoken on politics, criticizing the UK government's handling of Brexit and arguing that evidence-based policymaking was absent from the debate. Some praised him for speaking truth to power, while others accused him of mixing science with politics. Even within the scientific community, not all agree with his worldview. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb criticized Cox's suggestion that humanity might be the only source of meaning in the galaxy, calling it anthropocentric and taking ourselves too seriously. In the last decade, Brian Cox has been showered with honors. He received an OBE in 2010, was promoted to CBE in 2020, and in 2024, he was awarded the Richard Dawkins Award for promoting scientific literacy. Richard Dawkins himself called him a brilliant speaker, a beautiful writer, and a peerless science communicator. Yet, through it all, Cox has remained grounded. He is still a professor of particle physics at the University of Manchester, still contributing to research at CERN. His books, like Black Holes, The Key to Understanding the Universe, 2022, paperback in 2024, continue to translate cutting-edge physics into accessible stories. The tours have not stopped either. After breaking world records with Horizons, Cox continues to plan new shows, while podcasts and interviews keep his voice in the global conversation. He often says his proudest moments aren't on camera. They're when a child asks a question he can't yet answer. What's beyond the edge of the universe? One child asked. Cox just smiled. We're working on it. But his legacy isn't without tension. Among millions of fans, he is revered as the man who made the cosmos feel personal. Among some peers, he is still questioned, a visionary educator or a simplifier of physics. When history looks back, will Brian Cox be remembered as the physicist who discovered particles or the man who made the cosmos feel personal?